One of the things that we look at with respect to the actual repair and the welding is that we have the ability to actually look at the welding process from a virtual point of view. And what we're really looking at is how the vessel deforms or deflects during welding, or what the uh, stresses and strains are on the vessel. And so in terms of the decision-making process, we have this analysis in terms of saying, yeah, the, the vessel is fit for service. We have this virtual welding that tells us that we've minimized the impact of welding on the vessel. And then we create what we refer to as a weld map that we actually approve to the welding team to allow them to execute their repair of the vessel. On the weld map, this tells the welders what to weld. It explains exactly how much weld to put down, where to put it down, where to put any plates if we're putting plates, the exact circumferential and axial locations, the exact locations from the reactor positions as to where they're going to put it, the exact elevations, so that they know exactly where they're putting their weld, the, the weld we asked them to do. It's really saying, is it okay from um, meeting the structural requirements? Is it okay to making sure that we don't cause any additional stresses or deformations associated with that weld? Making sure that we can actually inspect the weld, making sure that we actually can actually execute the weld with the tools that we have in place. The first priority, one, is it has to meet the structural requirements of the code. The structural requirements of the code to make sure that the vessel after the repair is sound. The second competing priority is while we're welding to, to, to fix the vessel, we can't pull apart the vessel. So it has to, has to uh, meet the weld stress requirements. The third competing priority is the non-destructive examination of the welds we do. We have to prove the repair we've done is adequate. The fourth competing priority is what the welders can do. We can't specify a repair that cannot be physically done. And the fifth competing priority is tooling. We have tooling limitations just to, due to obstructions in the vessel. If you see over here, there's all kinds of obstructions in the vessel that stop us from doing certain things. My job is to find the sweet spot in between the five competing priorities. This takes multiple iterations. We'll try something, we'll get through one, two, three, uh, we, we can't examine the weld. We'll go back and try something else. So in terms of the repairs that we've done to date, they've been quite successful. For the last two repairs, which are the uh, most challenging in terms of uh, repairing the vessel, we are working hard in terms of making sure that from a structural point of view that is acceptable and so moving to a plate type repair which minimizes the actual welding that we have to put in place. We do all the analysis then we do test coupons over and over and over again the qualification coupons by the welders to make sure that they can do that and they can do it every time and they can do it right. Then they go into mock-ups with full-size tools and try it and make sure they can do it and they've got all the programming down and exactly what welding to do and where to start and where to finish. Then we go into reactor and we verify that we're putting our weld exactly in the right place and then I sign off and give them the go to go. Teamwork is actually critical. We want to make sure that we don't put ourselves in a position where the vessel is damaged or the actual time to repair the vessel is longer because we have to go back and do some rework or re-repair associated with the reactor. Creativity is good, but anything you can think up has to be able to be proved. It's not just coming up with a solution. It comes up, it's coming up with a solution that can be done, that can be implemented, that can be proved. And to do that properly, there's a rigorous and prudent approach to each step. I think there's also a sense of public obligation in recognizing that the operation of NRU is of prime importance for producing medical isotopes not only in Canada, but also worldwide. There's no alternative. Right now, if NRU doesn't come back online, the world suffers. Everybody here is conscious of the fact, and we're doing everything we can to get it back online as quickly as possible.